Welcome to the world of Cisco Voice over IP as we start things off with Cisco IP telephony, the vision and certification. And let me start off by telling you how glad I am that you decided to jump into the Voice over IP program. I'm telling you, there's nothing like it. It's something completely new, fresh, and different in the IT industry. So what I want to start things off with is going through what networks look like today. Let's look at the current state of our networks and then why an organization would choose to use IP telephony. I mean, the PBX and key systems have worked for years. Why change it? Then, after we've answered that question and kind of gone through the manager list of all the cost savings benefits and new applications that are out there, we'll then take a look at what it takes to move to IP telephony. Starting with the phase one migration, which is where most organizations that already have an existing voice infrastructure, that'll probably be where they start. Then we'll look at a phase two migration and what that looks like as people turn in the old equipment and move to a complete data voice infrastructure. Finally, I want to talk about the Cisco certification for voice, the CCVP, one of Cisco's newest certification programs that focuses on nothing but the voice over IP technologies. Well, let's start things off by hopping into our helicopter and humming up to somewhere around 100,000 feet and looking down at the world of networks today. You see three major types of infrastructures that exist. You have the data network where your PC plugs into the hub or the switch and that connects to a router. And that could be in the workplace or that could be connected to the internet, the largest data network in the world. You have servers and SQL and database and things of that nature. That's what we're most familiar with. You then move over here to the video network and now you're looking at things like satellite TV, cable TV, recording standards, video cameras that record to a beta or VHS video cassette or this new HDTV recording standard that uh, has very expensive equipment. And then you move up here to this voice network and you run into things like our telephones that are ringing at our homes, our cell phone infrastructure, things like that that are all completely separate every single one of these networks are their own network. They have their own set of standards, their own set of equipment, and if you ever want to integrate anything between these two, it starts getting pretty pricey. For example, if you ever call into a bank and you say, hey, you know, what's my balance? You hit, you know, the number two keypad or whatever, and the bank says, your current balance is one thousand one hundred and fifty two cents, and you, you go, oh, wow, I have eleven dollars. So, you, you, you know, you tied in from the voice network and it had to communicate to the data network. Now it was easy for you but on the back end the bank had to purchase extremely expensive cards for their their PBX system and that you had to tie that into a specialized proprietary database that allows it to communicate and read back and forth between these two. So you have ways of doing it but they're just not natively done. So it is very difficult to make these worlds talk, although it's currently happening a little bit. Finally, the voice network is being stretched to places it was never meant to go. I don't know if you're like me, but you may have had one of these experiences. You log onto your computer, start programs, dial up networking. And all of a sudden it pops up on the screen. You've connected at 33.6 kilobits per second. And you go, mm, and you have to disconnect and redial again because you're just not connecting as fast as you wanted to. You have to get that clean connection to get your 52 kilobits per second or something like that. Yeah, I know that's a little while ago before you may have switched to high speed internet. But at the same time, we're stretching that voice network where it was never meant to go. It wasn't meant to stream that amount of data across the standard telephone copper line. So, with all that in a plan, we need to do something else. And that something is collapsing all of those networks into one. The walls have come down and all the standards have merged into a common network infrastructure. Data, voice, and video streamed across the common network platform and that is our data network. The data network has the technology to be able to host all of that in one place. With all these networks merging into one, I jotted on there, insanely cool things are going to be possible. No more do we have to buy these expensive boards to integrate video, voice, and data together or have these proprietary standards. It's all going to be into almost an open source kind of configuration in the sense that all the protocols will be an open standard. All these different mediums will be able to communicate and 
life will be much better. You're going to start seeing amazing applications. That I, we already are seeing amazing applications that nobody thought possible. I mean, if you think about it, the service providers have been doing this for three or four, no, much more than that, you know, six, seven, eight years now. I still remember it. It was it had to be about eight years ago when we got the, the letter in the mail from our cable provider saying, just so you know, we've begun offering high-speed internet in your area. And my mind instantly went, wow, surfing the internet at more than modem speeds. I was amazed and mesmerized. And it wasn't too long afterwards that my telephone company sent me a letter in the mail and they said, you know what? We've begun offering cable TV. And I looked to my wife and I said, it's, it's happening. She said, what? And I said, all the networks are becoming one. And, you know, I had my arms in the air and she shook her head and walked away. And, it, it, you know, it's, it's, all these service providers are beginning to offer the same service. If you're with a cable network, they've begun offering cable TV and IP voice. Well, they don't call it IP voice, but they're running their own telephone nut lines to your house over an IP network. You have the, the telephone company now offering cable TV and voice and, of course, high-speed internet. So the service providers have begun doing this for a long time. It's now time for corporate America to follow suit and integrate this into their own networks. You're starting to see standards like H323, a standard like SIP, that defines all of these different infrastructures for the data, voice, and video networks, you know, point these right down here to these different traffic types, for our new applications to comply to. I mean, when I was talking just a moment ago, when all these clouds were separate, they all had their separate protocols, their separate standards that they designed to. Now you'll have one standard that inside of, say, H323, you'll have protocols for data, protocols for voice, protocols for video, and ways to link them all together easily without buying these expensive boards. Speaking of expensive, let's focus on IP telephony itself, as in why an organization would use IP telephony. Well, there's first off some trackable cost savings, and th these are things that you could write down on paper, you could create a formula, a spreadsheet, and it would say, here's how you save money. The number one saving cost that I can see is the moves, ads, and changes, and I'm talking immediate return on investment. Now, I know that may surprise a lot of you that are thinking, well, what about free long distance or something, you know, one of those big cost savings things. I'll talk about that in a little bit. But moves, ads, and changes in the old world would require a specialized PBX te technician or key system technician to come in and reprogram that device. I mean, you can't just unplug a phone from a PBX and plug it in at some other location, I'm talking within the company, and expect it to work at all, even a different port. You have to reconfigure each port for what phone number that represents. So. On average, Cisco did some tracking, and this is, this is verifiable information. On average, if you have a on-staff PBX person, you will be paying probably somewhere around $75 for each move, add, and change. And if you move you know, a whole floor from one floor to another or a whole group around, that can be considerable. If you don't have a PBX person on staff, the cost jumps up to somewhere around 100 to 200 bucks for each move, add, and change of a device. And that's hourly wages, contract income, whatever that may be. That adds up very quick because Macs, you know, it's not Mac addresses, it's moves, adds, and changes. Th these happen all the time. You have reduced wiring, and this is primarily in new buildings, to where now we don't have to run two sets of cable, one for the voice and one for the data network. We can just run not only one set of cable, but one strand of cable per location. Each cubicle or office will only need one RJ45 Ethernet jack that the phone can connect to. You can daisy chain your computer from the phone. You then hit the reduced telecommuter and branch office expenses. You used to have to buy something known as tie lines if you wanted, say, a telecommuter or a branch office to integrate into that vo voice network. And those tie lines are a monthly reoccurring cost and it got expensive. In this world, we can connect in with a VPN connection or shared data line that we already have for our existing data. So the cost really isn't all that much more than what we would pay typically to allow somebody to connect to the office from any remote location. Not to mention some of the whiz-bang, wow, that's cool stuff, like I've got a four-digit extension at my house, and people call me, and they don't even know I'm at my house, besides the dog barking in the background. Because that, you know, is 
tied into the voice network through a VPN. It's as if it was directly connected. You have the IT staff consolidation, and every time I, I start talking about that, I just go, Ew, you know, because it's, it's one of those things that nobody likes talking about except the management because they know they can now do more with less. You now have one group of people that manages the voice and data network and video to throw that in there all with one group. Now, that group does grow a little larger because... The, st the standard IT staff, if you just have a few people, sometimes can't keep up with everything they have to do. So hopefully not too many of us will have to go. <laughs> we have the application consolidation. Instead of having separate systems, separate applications for the voice network and data network, those applications all become one. Uh, for example, uh, take a hotel. In a hotel, you know, they have a, an application structure that allows people to order room service from their phone, uh, that to, to uh, go on their TV and order a movie or something like that, to check in, check out, all of that. And you can consolidate that now into one database structure, into one application. You can, for instance, have a phone in somebody's room that allows them on the little on-screen display on the phone to order room service, to order a movie, to check into their room or check out when they're leaving. Um, all of those have collapsed into one structure. Structure. And last and least, I like to say, is toll bypass, aka free long distance. Um, the reason I put this last is just uh, it, it's it's become one of those things that I'm just like every time I hear it. People always say, "Oh, what do you get with voice over IP?" Oh, free long distance, free long distance, free long. I've heard it everywhere. Everybody thinks voice over IP equals free long distance. And while that is absolutely true and can be pretty beneficial if maybe you're going to international locations, free long distance, I mean, long distance rates over the last five years have plummeted. Companies can get, you know, a penny, two pennies, three pennies a minute for long distance. So if you come to their table and say, oh, I can get your free long distance to your branch offices, they're going to laugh at you. They're going to say, hey, you know, we pay a hundred bucks a month for that or 200 bucks a month. You know, where's the real cost savings? So the reason I put that last is not necessarily because, you know, that'll be the last amount of money. It's just normal IT people just come to the table and that's all they have. They say, hey, we need to upgrade to voice over IP because free long distance is there. There's much, much bigger savings than just that. Where I start getting really excited is in the non-trackable savings. I call them soft cost savings. It's not really things you can figure out in an Excel spreadsheet because it's different for every company, but really these are things that will save you money in the long run. Number one is a single inbox for messages. This allows you to have kind of like the inbox. I need an echo after that, you know, the inbox, box, 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 that has all the voicemail, the fax, and email in a single location. Instead of you having to go, for instance, to a cell phone or to a, a voicemail system at your office and then check the fax machine and then check your email, you get them all in your inbox on your PC and you can print them, you can respond to them or so on. You can even pick up a phone if you wanted to do it that way, dial in and have the system read an email to you over the phone or read a fax. You just have one inbox that can be accessed from any application or device that's tied to the network. Um, this is a fun one. Extension mobility saves office space because you can have phones that are not just assigned to one person. Here's the vision. I mean, you need to close your eyes for this one. Imagine yourself, keep your eyes closed, walking into an office and you sit down at your desk and the phone is not yours and <laughs> you get a little freaked out you go um, did I just did I just get let go you know what's what's going on my, my phone number is not on my phone and the manager goes oh no 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 you're, you're still employed you just have to log into your phone so you log in with the little passcode they give you and poof there's your extension it appears and then you log out and you walk over to another cubicle and log in there and poof your extension appears and then you log out and then you fly to San Diego which wasn't your original office. You, you know, you're, you're sitting there, you walk into an office, you log in and poof, there's your extension. Your extension follows you from place to place. So you don't really have a phone that's yours. It's, it's kind of like the roaming profile days of Windows where you could log in and there's your desktop and log in somewhere else and hey, my desktop followed me. Now it's the same things with phones. So the beauty of that is you no longer have to have phones dedicated to people. You can let people share phones or log into phones as they need them and log out when they don't. You have internet website integration, and I just tossed happy customers on there because people like the ability to talk to people. It's, you know, it, 
Thank you.